recognize the impact and contributions that the Polish community has had in Alberta since the arrival of the first Polish immigrants to Medicine Hat in 1885, and to encourage all Albertans to recognize the contributions of Polish Canadian heritage in Alberta. W 2021 roku rząd Alberty uznał, że w każdą drugą niedzielę czerwca będzie obchodzony Dzień Dziedzictwa Polskiego w Albercie. Celem tej celebracji jest nie tylko okazja pokazania całej społeczności Alberty naszych osiągnięć na emigracji, ale także naszą kulturę i tradycję od czasu przybycia pierwszych polskich imigrantów w Medicine Hat w 1885 roku. My name is Adam Makarewicz and today I will be your MC. I was born in Canada and I'm a first generation Canadian. My parents are immigrants to this country and from a young age they placed a great emphasis on education. It is in great part thanks to them that I graduated from the U of A with a degree in mechanical engineering and fluently speak Polish, English and French. Growing up in Edmonton, I attended Polish Mass at Holy Rosary Parish I danced in a Polish dance group called Wowicz, and I attended Saturday Polish school named Szkoła Henryka Sienkiewicza. You could begin to imagine my enthusiasm as a kid having to attend school six days a week. But jokes aside, I share this because my younger years are a testament to the freedoms we often hear about in this amazing country. Canada offered me the freedom to be Polish, a freedom that many in our history did not have. Today, we celebrate Polish Canadian Heritage Day and the special connection that these two countries share. My name is Emilia Ziomko, and I was born in Poland. Immigrated to Canada with my family in 1992, and I believe that was the fourth part, part four ways of the immigration from Poland. I grew up in a small town of Drayton Valley, just west of Edmonton and moved to Edmonton in 2001 to attend the University of Alberta, where I graduated with a degree in chemical engineering. Being an immigrant in Canada and Alberta was not always easy and required my parents to take many risks. However, I never felt like I had to hide my Polishness and never will have to. Canada is a country of immigration with amazing opportunities, a country that allows us to be proud Polish and proud Canadians all at the same time. That is why the first celebration of Polish Canadian Heritage Day in Alberta is so special and we hope there'll be many more in years to come. Now as your MCs for today's event, we are honored to be part of it. And I'd like to welcome Halina Made, the President of the Polish Congress, Alberta Society, to say a few words. distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm greatly honored to speak to you today as the president of the Canadian Polish Congress Alberta Society. And I'm delighted that so many of our Polish organizations have come together, whether in Calgary, Grand Prairie, or here in Edmonton, to celebrate our tra Polish traditions, heritage, and culture. On behalf of Polonia in Alberta and myself, I would like to welcome everyone with pride and joy to today's celebration on this very prestigious location on 3D6 territory. Our pride is that the Legislation Assembly of Alberta in 2021 adopted Bill 2207, confirming that each year the second Sunday of June will be known as the Polish Canadian Heritage Day in Alberta. To honor Albertas of Polish heritage, who for over 136 years have dedicated themselves to building our great province. Polish Canadian Heritage Day is an, is an opportunity not only to showcase our achievements to all Albertans, 
but also share our wonderful culture, tradition, and introduce the many positive changes that have taken place in Poland since that first democratic election held on the first Sunday, sorry, on the second Sunday in June 1989. Special thanks to MLA Don Williams for the support of the initiative and presenting in the Legislation Assembly. Please let me acknowledge the very special contribution to Jan Szumlas, our Honorary Council of Poland, who spent many hours working with this Bill 207. Thank you, Jan, very much. Thanks to all volunteers who helped prepare for today's celebration. I wish you all a pleasant time with many positive impressions and enjoy Polish-Canadian hospitality. I would like to ask you all to please stand for the National Anthems of Canada and Poland, which will be performed by Ella Ostapowicz. As we stand and listen to the Polish anthem, the Polish flag is being raised on Violet King Henry Plaza, just north of the legislature building. I would now like to invite Father Mieczysław Burdze for the invocation. Niech będzie pochwalony Jezus Chrystus. Kochani siostry i bracia, drodzy Polacy, drodzy rodacy, gromadzimy się tutaj na tym pięknym w tym pięknym momencie rozpoczęcia tych uroczystości Polsko-Kanadyjskiego Dnia Dziedzictwa w Kanadzie. I wanted to acknowledge uh, mayor of the city present with us. I wanted to acknowledge our consul general from Vancouver, consul honorary of Alberta here in Edmonton, and also MLAs and uh, leaders of organi Polish organizations as we will begin with uh, 
with prayer, giving thanks to God. Today, in our Polish tradition, in the church, we give honor to God in the Holy Trinity, God as a community of love, God who is love. So we give him honor and praise, give God honor and praise in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, Lord of all, throughout the centuries you led Polish people and continue to lead through the earth, through the continents and countries. Today, celebrating Polish Canadian Heritage Day in Alberta, we give you thanks. We give thanks to you, Lord God, for all the blessings you bestowed upon us, pilgrims on this earth, in each its corner, but especially here in the beautiful province of Alberta and now here in Edmonton. We give thanks to you for the soil, for the water, for the sun that you blessed First Nations living here and first settlers of Polish origin for nourishment and upkeeping of our lives. We give you thanks for all our fellow brothers and sisters with whom we share this earthly life, for all the gifts and talents that put to work together enable us to build here on earth an anticipation of eternal kingdom while we build our daily homes, care for our families, in particular our youth and children, our future here and now. We give you thanks for faith communities we gather together as people of faith to enact your kingdom, heavenly kingdom here on earth, here in Edmonton, among many Polish communities, our Polish language parishes, Our Lady Queen of Poland, Holy Rosary Parish. We pray today, O Lord God, that you continue to bless this our common home, our families, homes, parishes, organizations, and the whole city of Edmonton and Alberta, entrusting ourselves to you through your Mother Mary, whom you gave to us as our patroness and mother. Boże, Panie wszelkiego istnienia, którego czcimy w Trójcy Świętej, przez wieki prowadzisz Polaków przez ziemię, przez kontynenty i kraje. Dzisiaj, kiedy obchodzimy Dzień Dziedzictwa Polsko-Kanadyjskiego w Albercie, Dziękujemy Ci, Panie Boże, za wszystkie błogosławieństwa, którymi nas obdarzyłeś, pielgrzymów na tej ziemi, w każdym jej zakątku, ale szczególnie w pięknej prowincji Alberta i tutaj w Edmonton. Dziękujemy Ci za ziemię, wodę, słońce, że pobłogosławiłeś żyjące tu pierwsze narody, pierwszych polskich osadników, osadników polskiego pochodzenia Dałeś nam to wszystko do wyżywienia, podtrzymania rodzin, naszego życia. Dziękujemy Ci za wszystkich naszych siostry i braci, z którymi dzielimy te ziemskie, to ziemskie życie, za wszystkie dary i talenty, które wspólnie pozwalają nam antycypować tu na ziemi Królestwo Niebieskie, wieczne, podczas gdy my budujemy nasze codzienne domy, troszczymy się o rodziny, szczególnie o nasze dzieci, młodzież, naszą przyszłość, już dziś i teraz. Dziękujemy Ci za wspólnoty parafialne, kościelne, które gromadzą ludzi wiary, aby uczestniczyć Królestwo Niebieskie tu na ziemi, a tutaj w Edmonton, wśród nich szczególnie dwie nasze polskojęzyczne parafie, parafie Matki Bożej Królowej Polski i parafie Matki Bożej Różańca Świętego. Módlmy się dzisiaj, Abyś, Boże, modlimy się, abyś, Panie Boże, nadal błogosławił ten nasz wspólny dom, nasze rodziny, domy, parafie, organizacje, nasze wspólne tutaj społeczeństwo, Edmonton, Alberty, całe miasto i cały ten region. Zawierzając się Tobie przez Twoją Matkę Maryję, modlimy się przez Ciebie, Panie Jezu Chryste, który żyjesz i królujesz na wieki wieków. W imię Ojca i Syna, i Ducha Świętego. Amen. Thank you, Father Mieczysław, for the beautiful prayer and for leading our Polish community in faith. 
I would like to introduce the distinguished guests from different levels of governments and local organizations who are present. The Honorary Consul of Hungary, Alexander Schenth, City of Edmonton Councillors Jennifer Rice and Karen Princip, President of the Canadian Ukrainian Congress Provincial Council, Odisha Boychuk, President of the Edmonton Lithuanian Society, Indres Chuplinskas, Canadian President of the Hungarian Diaspora Council, Anna Schenth. I would now like to introduce to you Mr. Stephen Drapaka, who is our keynote speaker today. Mr. Drapaka is a grandchild of Polish immigrants and a social studies teacher in the Peace River area. He has participated as a keynote speaker at Black Ribbon Day in 2013, Hungarian-Polish Friendship Day in 2014, and Black Ribbon Day in 2018. I'd like to uh, thank the Polish Canadian Congress of Alberta for organizing this fine event and all of you for participating in it. Uh, we are here today to celebrate the first annual Polish Canadian Heritage Day, which was assented to on June 17th, 2021 by the Alberta Provincial Legislature. The Polish Canadian Heritage Day Act encourages us to recognize the impact and contributions that the Polish community has had on Alberta since the arrival of the first Polish immigrants and to educate Albertans on the contribution of Polish Canadians. The first Pole to set foot upon the soil of Alberta was probably Karol Horecki, who arrived in 1872 as a member of the Sanford Fleming expedition to map out a route for the CPR railway. In 1874, Karol Horecki wrote a book, Canada on the Pacific, and had conducted topographic explorations of the Rocky Mountains and the Peace River watershed. The real story of Polish settlement, however, begins with Clifford Sifton, who as Minister of the Interior sought to attract hardy settlers from Austrian Galicia to settle in the rough terrain of Western Canada. Poland at the time was a poor, largely agrarian country that in 1795 lost its sovereignty to the partitioning powers of three East Central European empires. It was a devastating blow to Poles who, for centuries, enjoyed what was called their golden freedom. In Poland, all nobles were considered equals, regardless of wealth, and society was organized along the lines of contractual agreements like the Magna Carta in England. In the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, as it was called, the 10% of Poles who made up the nobility could elect new kings, exercise autonomy over their lands, and could veto unjust or unpopular laws. This differed markedly from the top-down authoritarian structures of Europe's stale monarchies. During this period, only 1% of the population could vote in parliamentary England, and throughout the rest of Europe, monarchs held the power of life and death over their subjects. The first Poles to come to Alberta were not of this class of nobles, but still possessed a love of freedom and a long memory of past traditions. These first settlers were, by and large, homesteaders, salt of the earth, hardworking people coming from a country that had lost its statehood. This first of five major waves of Polish immigration to Alberta began to arrive in 1895 until the end of World War I in 1918. This wave was led by Oblate Brothers, who preached the gospel and were to establish settled communities. Brother Antoni Kowalczyk is perhaps the most well-known of these Oblates. He worked alongside Cree and Métis communities in eastern Alberta, where the majority of early Poles settled. Brother Anthony built the famous Marian Shrine located on Mission Hill in St. Albert, 
which has become a destination of pilgrimage. The second wave were those Poles seeking bread and an escape from poverty in the period between World's, World Wars I and II, between 1918 and 1939. By this time, major Polish communities had already been established in St. Paul, St. Michael, and Mundair, among others. The interwar period was an uneasy time in Polish history, where a fledgling government, despite its ambitions and accomplishments, was still dealing with the enormous after-effects of the 123 years-long partitions. Part of that aftermath was the Polish-Soviet War of 1920, which halted the westward expansion of the Soviet Union. The Republic, which only lasted for one generation, 21 years, was hardly in a position to provide opportunities for all of its citizens. Many left to seek out new lives and new lands, and Alberta welcomed them. From this wave of immigrants, thriving communities based on an ab abiding respect for freedom and prosperity succeeded in bridging gaps between strangers. Father Anthony Silla, the builder of the famous Skaro Shrine near Mandare, traveled diligently by sled and ministered to Polish, Ukrainian, and German families. At the parish church in Kopernik, east of Kamros, the renowned teacher Viktoria Wachowicz taught both Ukrainian and Polish alongside one another, as well as catechism. And in Chipman, east of Lamont, a joint effort by Poles and Germans resulted in the construction of the first church in that community. Despite coming from lands growing in mutual antagonism, these diverse immigrants to Canada embraced a new identity focused on freedom and developing the community. The third wave were the exiles and included those Poles who had suffered the Golgotha of Stalinist deportations into the frozen wastes of Siberia. At the outbreak of World War II, around 1.5 million Poles were taken from their homes by the Soviet communists and sent to work in slave labor amid grueling conditions. Poland was the only country in Europe to have been attacked by the two largest totalitarian regimes of the 20th century at the same time. The Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact between Hitler and Stalin divided Poland into two. Hundreds of thousands of Poles, at the very least, were sent to work as forced labor in Hitler's Germany, while an even greater number toiled in Stalin's gulags. For these Poles, returning home was not an option. Many came to Alberta and diligently promoted a culture of education among themselves and their children. These emigre families established businesses and sought work in the city while contributing generously to Polish cultural institutions. The Polish Hall in Edmonton was funded and built by donations from this group of immigrants who arrived throughout the period of 1939 to 1965. The fourth wave were the communist era Poles that began to arrive starting in 1956 and then increased their number until the end of communism in 1990. Many immigrated during the so-called Solidarity Era, named after the Solidarity Trade Union movement whose figurehead was Lech Wałęsa. Uh, no mention of the Solidarity movement would be complete without emphasizing the critical role it played in the fall of communism in Eastern Europe and the, mol uh, the moral leadership of the, to the movement provided by the Polish Pope, John Paul II, who, by the way, visited Edmonton twice, once in 1969, while still a cardinal, and a second time in 1984 as the Pope. The Solidarity Era Poles were particularly well-educated, often in advanced fields, such as technology and science, and have proven themselves to be great contributors to their communities. Many among this wave of immigrants have made names for themselves in media, politics, and the arts, and particularly in the visual arts and as musicians in Albertan cultural institutions. Finally, the fifth wave, which extends from the end of communism to the present, is not so much a wave 
as a steady, slow trickling stream. The reason is simple. Having shed the yoke of Soviet oppression, Poland is now a free country, a member of NATO and the EU. Uh, young Poles migrate today for the same reasons that anyone in the Western world migrates, in search of greater economic opportunities and a desire to make their mark on the world. But for the first time in a generation, uh, these Poles are now on the opposite side of the barricade watching as their neighbors from Ukraine flood into Poland to escape Putin's war of aggression. They know intuitively and from experience, the experience of their forefathers, what it means to be a refugee. The Polish Canadians of Alberta stand alongside them. The five waves of Polish immigration to Alberta differed markedly. Some arrived to this province richer, others poorer. Some came with barely any schooling, others with PhDs. Some have remained devoutly religious, others less so. But what these varying waves of immigrants to Alberta have in common are these things. A deep love of freedom, a deep respect for fundamental human rights, and a desire to preserve the heritage from which those very values sprang while at the same time integrating themselves into a Canadian Albertan way of life. It is due to these fundamental beliefs and values that we've seen such a groundswell of support and generosity from a great number of Polish Canadian cultural organizations and individual community members for those Ukrainians currently suffering during the present war with Russia. This coordinated effort to provide help is more than just a question of moral and financial support. In my view, it's a model for how organizations, communities, and ordinary citizens, despite their differences, join together to achieve a common goal. <clears throat> There's a Polish aphorism that says, homeland is not necessarily the country you live in, but a country that you need, and that in turn, needs you. Polish immigrants to Alberta have found not one, but two countries to call home. Canadians, in welcoming the Poles to this great land, have in turn become an inseparable element in the hearts of Poles. We are grateful to the Provincial Legislature of Alberta for proclaiming Polish Canadian Heritage Day in recognition of our great ongoing friendship. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Dapaka. I would like to now read a letter from the Premier, Jason Kenney. Good morning, everyone. We've he we're here, to, of course, to recognize Polish Canadian Heritage Day and to celebrate the valuable contribution that Poles have made to Alberta. From the earliest settlers who came more than 130 years ago to help build Alberta in communities across our province, to those who fled the terrors of communist rules, to newcomers who continue to come to call Alberta home, Alberta's Polish community has done so much to make this place what it is today. It's something worth celebrating. It's why in Alberta, every second Sunday in June will now be recognized as Polish Canadian Heritage Day. Across Alberta, more than 171,000 Albertans of Polish descent can find events and communities taking part in the festivities from dance parties to picnics. There is something for everyone. But today isn't just for folks of Polish descent, but in fact for all Albertans to learn about the contribution, culture and history that make them such an integral part of Alberta's story. The tendency, drive, and entrepreneurial spirit that define Albertans, Alberta's identity are characteristics that we see reflected in this community. The first settlers who came as far back as 1890 to find opportunity and prosperity far across the world helped establish communities and through their hard work created homes, families, and businesses that would help Alberta grow to what it is today. But the tendency of Poles was demonstrated for the world to see in 1981, when Soviet communism would attempt to tighten its grip on Poland, imposing martial law, imprisoning and murdering those who wanted to chart their own futures outside of Soviet rule. Indeed, 
Poles would not give up their struggle for freedom and in 1989 would see the grip of communism pried off of their country with the first free elections taking place since 1947. It is a testament to those who gave everything to achieve this freedom and it is preciously guarded to this day. And when the Polish people regained their freedom, they reignited the profound friendship between our two countries. That's why in 2008, as Canada's immigration minister, we made it easier for Poles to visit Canada by lifting visa requirements on Polish citizens. It just made sense. I also work hard to make sure that Canada could be a place for Poles to continue to come here, recognizing the skills they have through a specialized immigration program. I was honored to be able to visit Poland several times during my time as a federal minister to strengthen the ties between our countries because those ties run deep. Poles helped build Canada. We fought the evils of Nazi fascism side by side and our people are joined by their lasting and permanent commitment to peace and human freedom. In fact, Alberta's Polish community has echoed the actions of their homeland, answering the call to provide aid, support and care to Ukrainians displaced by Putin's war of aggression. They are doing everything to support Ukraine's fight for freedom because they understand in a fundamental way the consequences of freedom being stolen. In fact, those consequences will be able to be seen by all when the monument to the victims of communism is completed in Ottawa, something I was deeply proud to be, have played a part in. So thank you for all that you have done and continue to do. And thank you as well to John Tomczak and the Polish Canadian Association of Calgary for the kindness of presenting me with the Ignacy Paderewski medal yesterday morning. It was truly an honor. Thank you. Bardzo dziękujemy. God bless you and God bless Alberta. I'd like now to read a message from Salma Lakani, Le Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. Message from the L Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. As Her Majesty, the Queen's representative in Alberta, it is my pleasure to recognize Canadian Polish Heritage Day and to thank everyone involved in hosting this special event. While I'm unable to join you in person today, I wanted to extend my heartfelt appreciation to all members of Alberta's very vibrant and hardworking Polish community. People of Polish descent have long played a valued role in the history of our province. From the earliest settlers who came here to forge a new life on the land that would later become Alberta, through the successive generations of Polish Canadians who have contributed the best of their vision, energy and abilities to the ongoing work of building our communities. The unique spirit of Polish Canadians has become a special part of the cultural fabric of our province and the spirit of diversity that we share thanks to the wonderful contributions of people like all of you. Thank you all and best wishes for a very enjoyable celebration. Her Honor, the Honorable Salma Lakani, Lieutenant Governor of Alberta. And now I would like to read a message from Randy Boissonneau, Minister of Tourism and Associate Minister of Finance. Dear Canadian Polish Congress Alberta Society, on behalf of the Government of Canada and as a member of Parliament for Edmonton Centre, I am honoured to express my utmost support during the first celebration of Polish Canadian Heritage Day. The Polish community in both Canada and internationally has made an immense contribution to our society and the world. We have seen this put on display as Poland has opened its arms to millions of neighboring Ukrainians fleeing the atrocities of Putin's illegal war. The first Polish immigrants arrived in Medicine Hat in 1885. That community of over 180,000 has, has since been essential to Alberta and Canada as a whole. Your contribution of culture, language and values have had a distinct impact on all of us. This is the first of many exciting celebrations of Polish heritage here in Canada. 
I give my thanks to the organizers, volunteers, artists, performers, and the many others that are active throughout the Polish community in Alberta. This annual event will help bring everyone together, making this community stronger and more connected than ever. Therefore, I would like to thank the Polish community of Alberta for the generosity, care, and enthusiasm you bring to this province. Sincerely, the Honorable Randy Boisson. I would like to now ask Mr. Dan Williams to come up and say a few words. He is the grandson of a Polish family. Mr. Williams is the member of the Legislative Assembly for Peace River and resides in the booming town of La Crete, Alberta, which is just south of the Northwest Territory border. We are honored that Mr. Williams is with us today as it was his determination that advanced the Polish Canadian Heritage Day legislation through Assembly and gained unanimous support across all political parties. Thank you, everyone. Emilia, you're going to have to pay attention because I don't speak Polish and you're going to have to repeat this speech in Polish afterwards, okay? Now, I think it must have been over two years ago now that John and I worked together to pass this piece of legislation commemorating this day as uh, Polish Canadian Heritage Day. And, uh, and just yesterday, I was talking to one of my constituents and he told me about his great uncle. His great uncle, Walter Lija, was born in Poland in 1921. He volunteered for the Canadian Armed Forces. He was an engineer, so he joined the Canadian Royal Engineers in the Armed Forces. And in May 17, 1963, he got a call in the morning at about 4 a.m., got woken up by his commanding officer. And uh, that day, already at 3 in the morning, on May 17, 1963, in Quebec, there were a number of different bombs that were placed throughout the city. This was during the FLQ crisis. And six of them had already gone off. And they had found two more in post office boxes. Now for the FLQ, this was, the post itself was a symbol of the Canadian presence in Quebec, federalism there. And so as the, the army officer who was trained as the Royal Engineer, he was sent to disarm these two bombs. And he did so, he, he was called by his officer and his duty was completed that day. After the first two, they called him up again and said, there was a third bomb found in the community of, I think it was uh, Westmount, in the Anglophone area of Quebec, uh, Montreal, pardon me. And while he was disarming that bomb, it blew up in his face. He lost his right arm. He was paralyzed for the right half of his body. He couldn't speak anymore in English or Polish. Uh, he had permanent brain damage. Now that day, Walter did his duty. That day, he was called and he served. And I think this says something about the character of those who come from Poland to Canada. Now, not everyone, duty of the moment, is called to disarm bombs. There are many Canadians who are called to a duty of the moment in a different sense. But this virtue of being called to that duty of the moment is present in every single Pole I've ever met in Canada. Every single one of them, whether they're a mother caring for the child the way that they've received care, it's not a big flashy role, but boy, it's just as important as Walter's was. Whether you're a tradesman who pays fine attention to detail to the work that he or she is doing, to have craftsmanship that we can bring from Poland and that, that attention to detail that is deeply embedded in that call of duty to the moment, that also is important. Whatever your role is today, that duty of the moment is calling you to some sacrifice. And that sacrifice is built into the character of Polish Canadians. It is so much so that it's been given now, borrowed into Canadian culture. It's a part of who we are as a people, that call of duty to the moment. And duty to the moment isn't easy. It's normally, ine inevitably, some kind of sacrifice, something you give up. There are times that I have to, as a father, care for my son, but I'd rather be sleeping. But my wife knows I have to do that. In those small ways, each of us, over and over again, have a calling that we answer of service. And that's why I believe Canada needs Poles more than ever before. That's why I'm so grateful for the gift of all those Poles who went before, like my grandparents and all of your families as well. Because you cannot build a nation without sacrifice. I promise you that. And the Polish people today that we've, we've mentioned, whether it's Walter, Lija, or we talk about those first Polish who came to Alberta. We talk about Brother Anthony when he was in St. Albert setting up that shrine. We talk about John Paul II, any Polish across the world, particularly those Polish immigrants here. 
They have given up much, and they can serve as role models for us going forward, not just as Polish Canadians, but as Canadians writ large, and how we can give to our communities and answer that calling that we have for the duty of the moment. And that's why I'm so, so proud of this event, of this day, to commemorate those who went before, but also encourage those who will go after us to follow in that same calling of service and duty. Thank you very much, and have a very wonderful day today. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I am not sure if I can translate all of that. <laughs> My apologies. But I would like to ask Mr. Andrzej Mankowski to say a few words. He is the Consul General of Poland in Vancouver, graduate from the University of Warsaw, Faculty of History. His professional work focused on the area of social communication. He was appointed Vancouver's General Counsel for Poland in February of 2020. Thank you for inviting me today. Uh, dear, dear, dear Mayor, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. And I will do it again, because it's the, I believe, the most important uh, word in the history of Polish Albertans and Polish nation. How to describe the Polish heritage just in few words? What is the essence of the Polish nation? What constitutes the Polish soul? Freedom, independence, solidarity. For the first for the first set, Polish settlers in Alberta, political freedom was important, but also economic freedom, the possibility of living in better conditions. The first and most numerous Poles in Alberta came from Eastern Galicia, in the southeast of Poland, now Ukraine. And Galicia was a multicultural region, important in the history of Poland, but ethnically dominated by Ukrainians from the beginning of its history. Poles came to Canada, to the prairies, together with their Ukrainian neighbors. From the same villages in ethnically and culturally mixed, mixed groups, they intermarried and very often saw no need to emphasize their national identity. Galicia at that time was not only multicultural, but also intercultural. So it can be said that the, from the early beginning, very beginning, Polish Canadians were precursors and pioneers of multiculturalism in Canada. In his memories, pioneering the West, Father Boniface, Boniface Franciscan, pastor of Chipman, wrote that the Chipman in 20s had the renown of being a place where Latin and Ruthenian Catholics mixed in truly Catholic unity. Today we also live in true unity with Ukrainians. Today freedom is also the most important thing for Poles. And that's why there is no more important issue for Polish, for Poles than uh, the war in Ukraine. This is a war from freedom, not only for, for Ukraine, but for the entire Western world as we know it. Canadians and Canadian authorities understand the situation very well. This is well understood by Ukrainian Canadians for whom the symbols of Ukraine today are not pisanki, pierogies, or an ancestral folklore, but true modern heroes. Ukraine is a symbol of the fight for freedom, and Polish support for Ukraine results from the fact that the, that the Poles understand the value of freedom as highly as Ukrainians. I believe that freedom and solidarity are the most important parts of the Polish heritage. And this, and this is the real challenge 
for Polish organizations in Canada to promote and strengthen the, these values together with other ethnic communities in Canada, which, which I believe will allow us, all of us, to be true Poles and good Canadians at the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mankowski. I would like to now ask Mr. John Tomczak to say a few words. He is the national president of the Canadian Polish Congress and previously served as the president of the Canadian Polish Congress Alberta Society. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, I am pleased to be here with you as the President of Canadian Polish Congress, National Executive Board, and as the first President to be elected from Western Canada to celebrate the first ever Polish Heritage Day in Alberta. Canada's Polonia, which is now 1.3 strong, has been an important part of our country since before co Confederation. Poles first settled in Canada in 1858 and arrived in Alberta starting in 1880s now have contributed much more to building uh, of our country. We are proud of our community, many contributions to Alberta and Canada, past and present, uh, and I was happy to be yesterday in Calgary and today here in Edmonton to celebrate these contributions with Albertans. Yesterday in Calgary, I was honored to present uh, Premier Jason Kenney with an inaugural uh, Canadian Polish Congress highest award, Ignacy Jan Paderewski Medal. For the premier uh, role and the previous as federal minister in a few departments, Premier Jason Kenney has done to, more to support Canada's Polish community than perhaps any political leader in Canada. Among many other initiatives, he spoke in support of the establishment by Alberta legislature on second Sunday of June of each year as a Polish Canadian Heritage Day in Alberta. He contributed to the lifting of visas requirements of, on the Polish citizens visiting Canada in 2008. He helped to establish John Paul II Day in 2014. He visited uh, Poland several times as a minister in 2010 and 2015 to strengthen the bilateral a relationship between uh, Canada and Poland. He was the main initiator of monument to victims of two communes, which is now building, uh, being built in Ottawa. We thank Premier for all he has done to the Polish community. In our today beautiful Polish celebration, we need to mention our friends and neighbors, Ukraine, who fought against uh, 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 Russia and is fighting at present time. We are, as the Poles, remember the true uh, price of freedom. And just like Ukraine, Poland suffered under Russia occupation and aggression, but the uh, determination of Polish people helped to win our freedom. And we believe that determination of, for freedom of Ukrainian people will also help Ukraine in win war against Russia and Vladimir Putin. In conclusion, I would like to thank Madam President Halina Made, the Kenyan President for Alberta and District, uh, all district uh, board directors, John Sumlas, Honorary Consul in Edmonton, all, all presidents and members of our uh, local community organizations in Edmonton for organizing this event. Thank you, Mayor so Sohi, Consul General of the Republic of Poland, Andrzej Mankowski, Consul General of Ukraine, Alexander Danielko, and other honor guests for being here to celebrate with us our first Polish Heritage Day in Alberta. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tomczak. I would now like to ask Mr. Amarjit Sohi, the mayor of Edmonton, to come and say a few words. Mr. Sohi is a person who clearly demonstrates that with hard work and determination, all things are possible. Prior to being elected as mayor, he sat as a member of parliament and served in the federal cabinet. Prior to that, he was a councillor in our city. 
Born in India, he is the first visible minority to serve as our mayor and Canada's first mayor of Punjabi descent. Well, good afternoon, uh, everyone. First of all, uh, let me start by uh, giving our gratitude uh, on behalf of Edmontonians to entire Polish community of Edmonton for standing in solidarity with uh, Ukraine during this very difficult time when uh, Ukraine is occupied and invaded by Russia. Your support to uh, the people in Ukraine, but also your support to uh, the Ukrainian community of Edmonton has been uh, really a valuable at a time when we needed to show that solidarity with the community. Yeah, you have stepped up to show that solidarity. So I really want to thank uh, each and every one of you on behalf of uh, Edmonton City Council. I also want to thank our province of Alberta for uh, acknowledging the contributions of the Polish community in Alberta by dedicating the second uh, uh, Sunday of, uh, of June as the, uh, as the Polish Heritage uh, Day. I think it's very important that uh, we celebrate our diversity, that we celebrate the contribution of everyone uh, and uh, that recognition is absolutely uh, valuable and important. So thank you so much uh, for that. I am so honored to be here with you, along with uh, uh, my colleagues, Councillor uh, Jennifer Rice. Can Jennifer, if you don't mind standing up, please be, uh, be acknowledged. Yeah. As well as my colleague, uh, Councillor uh, Karen Prince-Bay. Karen, if you please stand up and be acknowledged. We are here to... Uh, to let you know that uh, your city council really acknowledges and values the contribution that Edmonton's Polish community has made to building this city. I am an immigrant to this land of uh, Treaty 6 territory. This is a place where many of us have built our roots, our families, and our lives. Despite all the challenges that we face, but we lift each other up. And that's exactly what the Polish community has been doing ever since they set roots in Edmonton. Not only helping the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Polish community members who arrive later on, but being an integral part of Edmonton's success. So thank you so much to each and every one. It was so nice that we are celebrating our rich diversity, our heritage. I think what makes Edmonton such a wonderful place to live is that ability, regardless when we came to this land or how we came to this land, we're able to celebrate who we are. And we're also able to learn from each other, coming together in intercultural dialogue to build that better connection with each other, to build a better city, a vibrant place for all of us to live in. So with that, thank you so much to uh, each and every one of you and look forward to uh, further celebration. This is the inaugural. Uh, celebration. I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be more happening uh, over the next uh, number of years. As, as the word gets out, uh, I'm pretty sure there'll be more and more Edmontonians uh, uh, joining uh, joining us in, uh, in celebrating the contribution of the Polish community uh, in Edmonton. So with that, thank you so much for having us the opportunity to be here with along with my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Amarjit Sohi. I will now read a message from Witold Jelski, the Polish ambassador to Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Szanowni Państwo, allow me to express my appreciation to the organizers and participants of this year's Polish Canadian Heritage Day in Alberta, which is taking place to commemorate the first partially free elections in Poland after the fall of communism regime in June 1989. I would like to express my gratitude to Her Honor, the Honorable, Honorable Salma Lakani, Lieutenant Governor of Alberta, and all the members of Legislative Assembly for this wonderful resolution. Dziś spotykamy się w tym historycznym dniu polsko-kanadyjskiego dziedzictwa w Albercie, który ma przybliżyć mieszkańcom Alberty w każdym wieku i o różnym pochodzeniu polską historię, kulturę i tradycję. I'm impressed by the level of engagement of the Polish community in Alberta in promoting the Polish history, 
culture, and traditions. It is worth mentioning here, among many other initiatives, the official opening at the South Bandshell of the Alberta Legislature, the dedicated mass, the classical music concert featuring famous Canadian-Polish musicians, the theatrical performances by students of Polish schools, and the exhibitions of Polish artists. With these activities, you have built a unique atmosphere in Edmonton, Calgary, Grand Prairie, and their broader areas. As the primary task of an ambassador is to participate in a bilateral political dialogue. Allow me to reflect briefly on this matter. We are all observing the dramatic situation beyond the eastern border of Poland. War in Ukraine is raging. The situation of the Polish minority in Belarus has deteriorated dramatically. For the Poles living there, the prospects of preserving identity, culture, the Polish language, and the implementation of civil and social rights have been limited. Poland and Canada have no doubts that the war in Ukraine is of key importance, not only to European, but also transatlantic trans and global security. No wonder that President Andrzej Duda, Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki, other political leaders, state institutions, many Polish civic society organizations and individuals provide support in all areas to our neighbor. For over three months now, Polish people have opened their hearts and homes to millions of Ukrainian refugees. For doing so, they deserve our appreciation and recognition. I know that many of you have also provided much needed help. Thank you for that. I have arrived to Ottawa to assume my post as the ambassador of the Republic of Poland about two months ago. In that short time, I have already felt such a strong presence and so much warmth from the Polish community. I would like to convey to you my warmest greetings and congratulations for all the work that you are doing. Today, during the Polish Canadian Heritage Day, we are celebrating. We look at our national colors and remember our history, culture, and cherish the values that guard our identity. In this spirit, I wish you and your relatives good health, prosperity, and success in your professional and civic activities. Sincerely, Polish Ambassador Witold Jowski. I would now like to invite Mr. Oleksandr Denileiko, the Council General of Ukraine. Council General Denileiko was appointed to the newly created Edmonton Council General's Office in 2018. He has previously served as a diplomat in Sweden and in Toronto and held a number of senior positions with the Ministry in Kiev. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Your Worship, Mayor Sohi, my colleague and friend, uh, Consul General of Poland, Andrzej Mankowski, members of uh, uh, Alberta Legislature, City Councilors, Drodzy Polski, Priyachli, Pani i Panowie. It is honor for me and the diplomatic representative of Ukraine here in Alberta to attend this celebration. On behalf of the people of Ukraine, government of Ukraine, and on my own behalf, I would like to sincerely congratulate the Polish community of Alberta on the Polish-Canadian Heritage Day we are celebrating today. About 140 years ago, First Poles came here to Canada land looking for their new and better life. And since that time, they contributed a lot to the development of this province and this country, enriching Canada with their culture, history, and traditions. Today is the date to celebrate Polish heritage here in Alberta. But I can't help but mention the inhum inhuman and unjustified war Putin has just waged against Ukraine and what they are doing in the, in the war crimes. They are destroying our peaceful cities, civil infrastructure, killing our civilians, women and children. They actually want to eliminate Ukraine as a country and Ukrainians 
as a nation. It is actually the second act of genocide of Russians against Ukrainians after the Holodomor of 1932-33. And they must be, and I believe will be, brought to, to justice. In this critical situation, we are desperately need support and help from our friends around the globe just to survive, to save our nation, to save our future. And here, I have to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Poland. Thank you, Polish people, for all you've done. It is incredible, incredible what you have done and are doing to help Ukraine. No country in the world has done more than Poland. Poland and Ukraine are neighbors and good friends. But you will know your real friend when you get in trouble. And Poland has shown that it is ready to sacrifice, to, to do everything possible to help the neighboring nation struggling for its survival. And when war started, Poland opened immediately its border for uh, Ukrainians fleeing the war, letting them in without even proper documents. And what was important, Poles opened their homes and their hearts to Ukrainians, sheltering them from the horror of war, giving them safe place to live and providing any possible support. Now about 1.5 million Ukrainians are staying in Poland. And I'm not talking about the Polish helping us at the, at the nation. They, they are helping us from their hearts. And this is the incredible what Polish, Polish people have done for Ukrainians. Thank you, thank you very much. And I would like to thank you also Polish community here in Alberta. I know that a lot of Polish people uh, have been doing everything possible to collect the humanitarian aid, to collect the funds to help Ukraine. And I know some, some people doing very well. This is Thomas Lukashek together with, uh, with the former premier at Stelmach. They collected tons of urgent and very needed humanitarian aids for Ukraine and send it to Ukraine. And we together uh, uh, initiated some, some events, fundraisers that uh, uh, gathered a lot, of, a lot of help for Ukraine. So thank you very much, Pol Polish community, uh, Polish Poles uh, living here in Alberta, in Edmonton, for your support. But as uh, war is going on, Putin still kills our people, destroying our cities. So we really need and really much needed the help now. So please don't stop uh, acting in this direction and please don't stop helping Ukraine. But today, the day for celebration. Celebrate, celebration the Polish Canadian Heritage Day. Poles, together with, with Ukrainians, all other nations uh, have contributed a lot of to, to the development of this province, of this country. They contributed a lot to social and economic development of Canada, brought here their culture, tradition, and heritage. So, on behalf of Ukrainian people, on behalf of myself, I would like to sincerely congratulate you on the Polish-Canadian Heritage Day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Alexander Danleko. I'd like to invite Mr. John Shumlas, Honorary Consul of the Republic of Poland, to say a few words. Mr. Shumlas has been the Honorary Consul since 2004 and works hard at strengthening and deepening relations between the Republic of Poland and Canada. He is an instrumental member of the Polish community in Alberta, and through his involvement and encouragement, the community continues to strengthen its cultural identity. Thanks, everyone.
you know, uh, uh, it's always difficult to follow such uh, dynamic speakers that we have. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I am so honored that uh, our parents are with us today relative to uh, the project that we're working on. We will ensure that uh, the uh, St. John Paul II school will continue. Uh, a number of the ladies and uh, uh, Emilia and I uh, will be meeting with the Department of Education. I know uh, my good friend uh, Mr. Williams has pledged his support. Uh, we want to ensure that uh, the mistake that was made in closing down uh, the St. Basil School and the Polish program will be corrected and corrected soon. Your Worship, uh, Consul General of Poland, Consul General of Ukraine, uh, leaders from various areas, the two uh, uh, city councillors, welcome. You know, it's always nice to have uh, our newly elected city councillors meet the community. And uh, next year, there will be uh, very few places to sit down because uh, our uh, uh, south part of the lawn here is now filling up very nicely and uh, will continue to grow. Because today in Grand Prairie, uh, yesterday and then today in Calgary, and here in Edmonton, Albertans from all walks of life, not just Poles, not just Ukrainians, not just Polish Ukrainians, but people from all walks of life, are coming together to recognize that the new Poland that exists is a Poland that that young little lady will be very proud of in the years to come. We are here because of the commitment that the Honorable Member for Peace River had when I met with him and said, Mr. Member, what's the chance of introducing a private member's bill and working together, we're sure that we can get every political party in the House to support it and get it done. And so, Mr. Williams, on behalf of all of us, thank you again ever so much. You know, I, I've said many times, my parents were refugees. Uh, they're refugees from the Soviets and the Nazis. And they were part of, as Stefan said, the third wave. We were, we were more, uh, they were most fortunate to come to the far south of Alberta. They arrived there with my two older brothers who were born in a refugee camp in northern Germany in the fall of 1948. They came here and they were so confident that each and every one of you have demonstrated your confidence in this province, Alberta, and what this province has granted them, that they had me and two other brothers. Family of five boys, we were all taught never to take democracy as merely a word. We were all taught that we must be ever vigilant to ensure that problems between peoples must be solved by words, not by bullets. And my father constantly referenced that it is the ballot box, not the bomb, where differences can be addressed. This month, in June, <laughs> excuse me, 33 years ago, the people of Poland were granted an opportunity to elect their representatives. The first truly fair, partial election since 1920. When I met with the Honorable Member for Peace River and proposed the private member's bill and suggested that we designate the second Sunday of June as a Polish Heritage, a Polish Canadian Heritage Day Act, my reasoning then, as it is now, that we must remember that it was in June of 1989, only 33 years ago, only 33 years ago, 
when Poles were permitted to vote without the total dictates of their communist Russian masters. We can all see for ourselves today how democracy has shaped Poland. In only 33 years, Poland is an active member of NATO, a member of the European Union, has a dynamic and growing economy, and in a couple of the booths there, do pick up some of the 2020 publications that show wonderful places where we would encourage all of you to travel and see. We would encourage all of you to visit. We would encourage all of you to learn about because the economy in Poland, by all accounts, will be and continue to be a leader in Central Europe. As a free people, ladies and gentlemen, in a recent public opinion survey, 89% of Poles indicated without hesitation, without any apprehension of support, have embraced the over 4 million Ukrainians who have this morning, as reported by the Polish Border Control, have entered Poland. 1.8 million have returned back to Ukraine. And as the Consul General indicated, roughly 2 million are in Poland or are moving through, and some, if we can get the Government of Canada to move a little faster, on their way here to Alberta. You know, friends, 4 million women and children who in only 108 days have fled the ravages of the assault by the madman from Moscow. A number just shy, think about this, 4 million, a number just shy of the total population of the province of Alberta. We're not talking about one city or two cities. We're talking about the whole province of Alberta. In 108 days have shifted and moved to Saskatchewan. Well, maybe to BC. But, you know, it, just think of the enormity of the challenges that. And so we all pray that soon the madman will see that his attempt to recreate the Russian Empire and to be heralded as the new Peter the Great won't succeed, will not be allowed to succeed, and will never succeed. And he will leave and leave a free and democratic Ukraine. All of us need to be ready to assist in the massive rebuilding that awaits Ukraine. Friends, it will be rebuilt, it will be free, and it will be democratic. I know all of you will agree with me that a free spirit and our determination of our Polish heritage, grounded in a strong faith of God, our strong commitment to our family, and the never-ending desire for freedom. These are the cor cornerstones that are the foundation that all of us in Alberta benefit. We step back and look at the accomplishment of the 186,000 Canadians of Polish heritage that live here in Alberta. We better understand why our province is such a wonderful place, whether it's in the judiciary, in all of the healthcare fields, the engineering, the teaching, the professorships, the music, the building and dynamic businesses, and I can go on and on. Our Canadian-Polish community definitely has made a major contribution and is making and will continue to make a major contribution to our province. Friends, I'm sure that it was Mr. Williams's Polish grandmother had a major influence on him, as it was his focused determination that the Polish Canadian Heritage Day Act was granted unanimous approval by all political parties in the assembly and is the law of the land. Again, Dan, thank you very much for taking the leadership to get it done. Permit me to conclude by recognizing and thanking all of the members of the working committee. <coughs> Nothing happens on its own. 
You have all kinds of people who have done remarkable work, whether in the back there, whether in the two schools, whether our St. Uh, our St. John Paul II school group, you know, all of them and our dancers that are coming in, because all of them, under the leadership of President Helena Made, have dedicated countless hours to ensure the success of our event here in Edmonton, our events in Calgary, and our events in Grand Prairie, and we hope and we look forward to seeing all of you next year. Jinkuya Barza, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. John Shumlas. Uh, this concludes the formal part of our program, and we are now ready to begin the artistic segment. To start us off, I would like to ask the ladies of the Polish Canadian Women's Federation to come forward. Noc Świętojańska, Noc Kupały, Sobutka is a traditional Slavic holiday that was originally celebrated on the shortest night of the year. The most famous part of the evening is when young women go down to the river and set wreaths with candles afloat. If the wreath is picked out by a bachelor, it signifies imminent marriage. The ladies of the Polish Canadian Women's Federation will be located by the fountain at the bottom of the back stairs to demonstrate this tradition for us. by two talented musicians, Maya Budzinski and Dr. Mikoy Varshinsky. Maya Budzinski is a Canadian violinist of Polish descent who in 2018 was awarded the grand prize at the Canadian Music Competition, and Dr. Mikoy Varshinsky, who is a Canadian pianist also of Polish origin, who performs at prominent concerts around the world. In 2018, he released an album for the Worth Institute label. Please give a warm welcome to Maya Budzinski and Mikoy Warszynski as they perform Kujabiak in A minor, composed by Henryk Wieniawski. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. 